Okay, so next next video is uh, how to handle adjustments, how to add records within the, the uh, employer portal. So things to look for in this video uh, are there, there are more than one way to make adjustments, um, either in the portal or through payroll. And anytime you can adjust, uh, and when I'm talking about adjustments, um, usually it, it has to do with dollars and cents. And, uh, you know, if a stipend, if something was missed on a previous payroll that's already been submitted and posted, uh, and, but it was, it was done incorrectly, the amounts were wrong, you can do this uh, within Gemini through an adjustment process that uh, Chris will go through in this video. Uh, and if you can do it through payroll, that's the best way to do it. You could also do it within the system uh, by making making uh, adjustments and then you would be invoiced for that difference. But it's always preferred to do it through payroll. Again, you know, that has to do with uh, keeping your, your system uh, in sync with the employer portal. So uh, he'll talk through the process of adding records. So if, if something was missed uh, altogether and you need to add a record um, that was done on payroll, then you can uh, do that in the system. Um, so adjustments to dollar amounts are done with Delta or in other words, changes. So if you're changing or adjusting a dollar amount, you're gonna do it through the payroll file um, and report just the changed amount. Whereas you're, uh, if you're adjusting days that were reported, you would uh, report the new or the correct number of days that should have been reported for a pay period. So, and one last thing is employer services staff can also make adjustments um, within Gemini uh, and, and the process is a little bit different, but the idea is the same thing that we do with adjustment to earnings currently. And, and uh, I'll mention here, just so I don't forget after the video, but the current process for adjustment to earnings, the ATE forms, those uh, that will not go away anytime soon because anything that has to be adjusted prior to Gemini go live will still be done with those adjustment to earnings. Uh, in that same process that we use now. If adjustment is needed for anything post go live with Gemini, then it's uh, it's gonna be done uh, in the way that this video will explain to you. The following is an instructional video made by TRS for the Gemini Employer Portal. The focus of this video will be walking through different methods for submitting adjustments to previously reported information and how to add new records to a report that is already in progress. Often, it will be necessary for employers to submit adjustments to information they have already reported. Employer submitted adjustments can be done through one of two different ways or a combination of both. The first option we will refer to as submitting an adjustment through payroll. This applies to employers reporting to TRS via file upload. Depending on your payroll provider, you should be able to create an adjustment through your payroll software, which will then create an adjustment record to be added to your next report or file. This record will be recognized as an adjustment because it will have the same combination of pay period, payment reason, and person as an already posted record from your employer. On an adjustment record, the five per pay period dollar amount fields, including earnings, contributions, and THIS contributions, should be reported as the desired difference from the original reported record. For example, if a member's earnings were originally reported as $2,000, but should have been reported as $1,500, then the adjustment record would have negative $500 in the earnings field. Thus, when the original record and the adjustment record are composited together, we get the correct total of $1,500. The second method for adding an adjustment is detailed in the next section of this video.
You can also create an adjustment by adding a record to an already in progress report. You can also add records as needed if it didn't make it into your file for whatever reason, if it's not an adjustment to something already reported but just something that should have been reported previously and was missed, or if you report via data entry and you need to add a new employee. To add a record to a file, click the Add Record button near the top right of the Details and Adjustments screen of any in-progress report. On the Add Record screen, first enter the Social Security number of the member you want to add a record for and click Search. If TRS does not have a record of that member currently working at your employer, you will receive a message to that effect. If the person is new to your employer and you still want to add them, you can click the Add Record button and you will be taken to the full edit screen of your newly created record with only the SSN field filled in. You will then need to fill in all remaining required fields before saving your record. If the member does currently work for your employer, you will receive confirmation of the member's name and date of birth. If you want, you can click the Add Record button now to create a record for that member with most of their information already filled in. You will need to finish filling out the required fields before saving your new record. You can also use the filter controls to return all records from your employer for that member that fall within the dates provided. You can select a record from the table and using the Actions drop-down to the left, you can either copy the record, which will create a new record using the old one as a template, for instance, if you needed to report earnings for a different payment reason to what was originally reported because it was missed when it should have been reported with the original report. You can also select the Edit option, which will create an adjustment record for the selected older record. You can then correct any necessary information before clicking Save to complete the creation of your adjustment. Keep in mind that to be an adjustment, a record needs to be for the same person, payment reason, and pay period as an already posted record. If previously posted earnings were reported for the wrong pay period or payment reason, you will need to adjust the original record to zero earnings and days paid, then submit a new record with the correct payment reason and or pay period. TRS Employer Services staff have the ability to make corrections to records before they post if needed and can also create adjustments. If any changes are made by TRS staff to information you have previously submitted, you will be notified via the Summary of Changes report that will be included with your employer packet, which will be available from the employer packet screen five business days after your report was submitted and will contain any changes made since your last packet was produced. The View Employer Packet screen can be accessed from the reporting menu at the top left of any page. This has been an instructional video made by TRS for the Gemini Employer Portal. The focus of this video was walking through different methods for submitting adjustments to previously reported information and how to add records to a report that is already in progress. So again, just to uh, reiterate, a uh, preferred way to make adjustments would be through payroll, um, but the, there's more than one way to skin a cat. So uh, the, the, Chris kind of explained uh, the different ways adjustments could be made going forward. Uh, ATEs, as I mentioned, are, are gonna remain the same process for any adjustments needed prior to uh, go live of Gemini. Uh, eventually, once everything's in Gemini, then uh, it'll all be done within Gemini and those ATE, uh, that whole process will, will go away. Um, all online adjustments that are made will be reflected in the invoice section of the payment screen, which is the next video. So with that, let's take some questions. Thank you, I have a few here. Um, retired teachers do not need to be reported on the annual report, is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Uh, you do not report them on the report unless they have exceeded the post-retirement employment limitations. And if they have, you should contact us. If you do report them, you will get edit 4207. 
And if you get this edit number, you should re remove them from the report if they have not exceeded the post-retirement limits. Um, next question, how is summer school through June 30th and July 1st and 2nd reported when it's all paid in July? You're on a roll, you wanna take that one too? Sure. Uh, earnings are reportable and continue to be reportable on an accrual basis. So whatever is earned in June has to be reported on that fiscal year's report, end of, end of last report, sorry. And if that is paid in July, after you have submitted your last pay period report, you'll report that as an adjustment to the pay period in which the work was performed. And then any work done in July is reported in the new fiscal year. Anything else? Yes, I'm looking here. Do separate calendars need to be made for extended school year? Um, extended school year, I'm assuming that is your summer school teachers. They will be reported with a payment reason of SS for summer school in the fiscal year in which the summer school is performed. And you will report the days paid with that summer school payment reason. But it, you know, if, if, if summer school was worked in the month of June and, uh, but, the timesheets, whatever it is to uh, get them paid, doesn't happen until after July 10th, that's still okay. What you'll do is send in an adjustment because the work was the previous fiscal year. So you'll send in an adjustment for that previous fiscal year uh, through Gemini so it gets credited to the right year because you, you will miss that July 10th cutoff. Um, but uh, but it's not a problem for things like that. Um, it can be made up and made as an adjustment. What if federal funds are retro to a previous pay dates covered and paid previously? For federal funds, you do not need to do an adjustment if it ties to a previous pay period. We just need to make sure it's reported in the correct fiscal year. So you, if you are paying something for federal funds in one pay period and applies to another pay period, just report it in the um, pay period in which you're paying it. Right, but if it is for the previous fiscal year, something you missed, that would have to be an adjustment. What if we need, what if we dock somebody and the docking occurs in a different pay period? report the dock in the pay period in which the docking occurs. We understand that sometimes there is a lag in time between when you're notified that somebody was absent and when the docking occurs in payroll. So report that reduction as a day paid and as you'll report, reduce your days paid and reduce your base salary earnings when the docking occurs and report also at that as a dock day. Yeah, that, that um, we recognize that can be a challenge going forward. So whoever had that question or has those questions, you know, as we get in, uh, as we move forward, uh, those are the kind of questions we may need to uh, walk through with the uh, one of the employer services staff to make sure it's reported correctly. Okay, let's move on to the last video and, uh, but we will have plenty of time to get to uh, several more questions. So the last video is on invoices and payments. And I'll tell you the, the development team and the BAs uh, put a lot of time in this. And uh, there's a lot that goes into this because uh, there's just a lot of detail uh, to get those, uh, the amount that employers are being billed each month and have them reflect in Gemini. So 
uh, things in the video, uh, just the details of the in invoices and how the uh, invoice section of the employer portal will work. So we'll get into that and then we'll discuss that and, and finish up the, uh, the presentation. The following is an instructional video made by TRS for the Gemini Employer Portal. The focus of this video will be how to view and pay employer invoices using the Gemini Employer Portal. Employers will still receive an employer bill as they do today. The contents of the bill and the new method for paying it can be found on the total screen of any in-progress report. Currently, invoices can only be paid through Gemini as part of submitting a report. Ad hoc invoice payments will be added at a later date. Invoices for things like late penalties, excess salary costs, or ATEs will be paid through Gemini reporting, but will still have the same rules for due dates and the ability to make partial payments as they do today. Active invoices will be listed here on the totals page of an in-progress report. Using the Actions drop-down to the left of the listed invoice, you can select the Quick Edit option if you want to pay the invoice in full. You can enter the current due amount into the remittance amount and then click Save or click the X button to cancel your changes. To make a partial payment to any applicable invoice, select the Edit Invoice Items option from the Actions dropdown. Each separate item in the invoice will be listed here. You can use either checkbox to apply a percentage or dollar amount to each individual item or you can use the Actions drop-down to the left of an item and select the Quick Edit option to enter a remittance amount for that specific item only. You can also view the accounting history for each item by selecting that option from the Actions drop-down. Once you have made any necessary changes, click Save to be returned to the total screen. Invoices created by TRS staff making adjustments or error corrections to Gemini reporting will be labeled as Adjustment Error Correction Invoice as seen here. They contain all three required contribution types in the same invoice. Select the View Invoice Items option from the Actions dropdown. The following screen will list the three contribution amounts separately and each one can be drilled into further by using the View option from the Actions dropdown to show each individual item or member that makes up the invoice, similar to the Retirement Cost Invoice we looked at earlier. After you have added all desired remittance amounts to your invoices, you can click Save and proceed to Payment. From the Payment screen, you will submit payment for both your selected invoices and the regular contributions within the report. This has been an instructional video made by TRS for the Gemini Employer Portal. The focus of this video was how to view and pay employer invoices using the Gemini Employer Portal. Okay, so invoices and payments, uh, some things to keep in mind. The bills that uh, are produced on the 25th of each, each month now will continue to be produced uh, and you'll still be able to access them through the employer web access. But anything that shows up on those bills will now be on the invoice section of the uh, payment screen that, that was just demoed. And, and at that point, then you can go in and, and if the, uh, uh, you know, the rules are that you have a certain amount of time to pay them or you can pay just a portion of them, uh, you have that flexibility within the portal to uh, pick and choose how you pay. Uh, other things like the 9% and the, this fund and, and any adjustments to earnings or anything like that, uh, those will have to be paid you know, with this uh, payment submission on, on the report you're working on. Uh, but the others you can pick and choose and, and uh, drill down to the details if you uh, don't want to pay the full amount. Um, payments are going to be made through Employer Portal, so no longer will you go to the, the third party um, through the web access to make your payments. Um, any payments Posts go live with Gemini should be made through the employer portal. Um, so with that, what sort of questions do we have in the invoices? Okay, we have a few. 
I have teacher salary contract that go through July 31st. So they will be paid two times in July on the fiscal year contract. This has always been reported on the annual report ending in June. Does it still get reported on this coming up annual report or does it get reported in July? The earnings are still reportable on a accrual basis. So everything earned by the end of June 30th, this year belongs on this year's annual report. And in the future, when you are paying those, paying out the remainder of somebody's contract in July and August, that will be reported on your report that is due to us by July 10th. And you will report those earnings with the deferred flag marked yes. Deferred means that you are paying earnings in a pay period in which there are no days worked. So you could have deferred at the end of a fiscal year when you're paying out somebody's contract. You could have deferred at the beginning of the year if you're prepaying somebody's salary, before, if you're paying them a paycheck before they've started working, or sometimes during winter break if there are no days work during that pay period. Lisa, do you have anything specific to invoices and payments? Oh, if not, yes. What, okay. Oh, yes, I do, sorry. No, um, you're fine. Had a question about if a district pays for retiree insurance, where will those invoices be located at? Will we continue to receive a monthly email stating that the invoice is available? Also, where will those invoices be paid at in, in employer access or Gemini? All good questions. That, so you'll be notified the same way you are now. Um, but the difference is that uh, those amounts then, once, you're, once you see the, the bill and the web access, if you, when you're ready to submit your next report in Gemini, those amounts will be on that um, invoice screen, on the payment screen under the invoice section. And at that point, you know, if somebody, uh, somebody's um, has dropped off that insurance paid um, section because maybe they are, are Medicare age now, then you can go in and take them off your invoice and uh, uh, and not pay for that person. So again, the bills are going to be generated just as they are now, but how you react to them and how you pay them uh, is going to be different. You will be paying through Gemini going forward. Um, I don't know if you want to add anything to that, Lisa. No, and I think you've gotten all the invoice questions taken care of. Okay, well, let's go ahead and, and uh, finish up the slides and then we'll just open it up generally and uh, uh, get back to some of the questions that we missed. There. So uh, a few more things about the system. Um, I mentioned this earlier, but Employer Portal, there will be some timeouts um, based on the inactivity, and that is set at 20 minutes. So if you uh, are working in there and, and you get distracted or, or you're away from your desk for more than 20 minutes, the system will time you out and log you off. And that is all due to security. Um, and there's really no variance there uh, because that is set by uh, certain audit, um, not audit findings, but audit guidelines and security guidelines that uh, our security uh, person has set up. Um, emails, you're, you're going to get emails through the registration process. Every time you sign on the, the multi-factor authentication process, uh, you will get emails with those security codes and those will come from this address that's on the screen, the TRS Gemini Messenger at trsil.org. So that's an address you probably want to take away from this training, go to your IT people and make sure that address is uh, whitelisted so that uh, when those emails are sent from the system, they're not 
they're not flagged as spam or, or they're not quarantined, they're allowed to go through. It should be a trusted source. There's really two browsers that are being supported with the employer portal, and that is Chrome and Microsoft Edge. So if you're using uh, uh, Safari or Firefox, something like that, you could probably still access the system, but the screens may be uh, quite wonky and, and you may not be able to actually do some of the functions correctly. So uh, urge you to use Chrome or Microsoft Edge when you're working in the portal. Um, the URL that is uh, gonna be used for the employer portal is uh, on the screen. It's just employer portal at trsil.org, but it is secure. so you will need that HTTPS. Um, when you get the invite emails, I mean, it's gonna take you right to uh, uh, the site and you go through that process. But if you're going to bookmark it, this is the bookmark, this is the URL that you would want to bookmark going forward. Uh, and we'll, we'll include this in, in other communications as we get closer. So as we go live um, with anything that's this big and any time you have, you know, uh, nearly a thousand employers or stakeholders that are using the system, um, there could be issues that you run into, uh, system issues, uh, bugs or, or other roadblocks that you might come across. So what we want you to do if you run into something like that is email, uh, the employer services mailbox, which is just employers at trsil.org. And that is monitored uh, throughout the day, every day. And we will uh, hook up with you once we see what the issue is. But uh, if you're reporting some sort of issue, be sure to include as much detail as you can. You know, the, the screen that you're having problems with, the steps you took to get to that point, and uh, what you were trying to, to do, if you have any screenshots, if, if there's error messages that you're getting, uh, those error messages, if you can take screenshots are always helpful. So, um, so again, anytime a new system is implemented, um, you know that there, there are gonna be problems, uh, but we wanna streamline the resolution to those issues as much as possible. And this is the, the way you, we want you to do it. So if we determine that it is a true bug or something that really needs to be a, a quick fix or a hot fix, as they say, and needs to be turned around quickly, we uh, will open an issue with IT and, and they will respond accordingly. Um, some, some things about the current employer web access and, and uh, there were some questions early on about this. So. We just want you to know that employer web access is not going away anytime soon. Uh, it's still there, your login's still the same. Again, it's separate from Gemini and the employer portal. So whatever your login is now, however, whoever has access to web access now will continue uh, going forward. But uh, obviously the big thing that's out there is the FY 2021 annual report. Uh, that process or that report was turned on for employers uh, as of June 1st. And we already have a few or a handful of annual reports submitted to us for this current year. But uh, you have until April 15th, just like every previous year, to get that annual report data to us uh, so that uh, the employer services team can, can uh, audit that report and get it to uh, a point where it can be po posted. So nothing changes on the inner report this year, still needs to be done. And we do understand, believe me, the, the challenge there with uh, learning Gemini as well as completing the annual report. So, uh, um, and we'll talk about the, the call center uh, on the next slide uh, that we've set up to help with, uh, um, help you through the process. But any supplementary reports, sick leave certifications, uh, that whole process is not changing either. Um, our legacy system is still the record of system as far as paying claims. So when somebody terminates, it applies for um, 
a retirement benefit, disability benefit, anything else, uh, any time a supplementary report is, is needed, that process will stay the same. Uh, you can view your TRS bills. Like I said, those are still going to be created. You can view them on the web access. The employee lookup that's out there is still out there. Uh, you can get there. Uh, look up what tier somebody's in um, and a few other things. You can view the prior annual reports and supplementary reports uh, that you always have. And also that secure document upload. Um, if you need to get some documents to us because one of the uh, Employer services staff asks you uh, for a document to verify some data. Um, that document upload is still out there and will still be used anytime you need to get a document to us. There's going to be, or there is right now, a new query, a uh, new report available to you um, that is going to be important when you first start reporting in Gemini, because one of the fields that we ask for is an employer employee. TRS employment begin date for each employee. Um, and we know that this is not something you necessarily have in your system. So we are uh, providing you a report of your uh, employees with the, the dates that we're, we are expecting when you report in Gemini. And <clears throat> excuse me, a bulletin went out yesterday, I believe on this topic, and we've gotten a lot of questions on it already. Um, and I, I suspect we'll have even more questions, but um, the, the employer bulletin talks about how to use this report. Basically, it's a guide for you. Um, if you do not, have not captured TRS employment begin date, and what that is, is the first time the employee at your employer uh, first started working in a TRS covered position. Um, that is different than their hire date in almost every case. So we're not looking for a higher date because they could have, you know, a lot of teachers are hired in May, but they don't start teaching until September. So you wouldn't report them to TRS until September um, when they actually start working. And that's the date we're looking for, not the previous year's date. Or it could be that they were hired and they were IMRF for the first three years and then, then moved to a, a TRS covered position. We want that TRS covered position when that happened. Uh, and you may have other staff who worked for you for a period of time. They left, worked for another district, and now they've come back. We want that new date. Um, so this report would tell you, because if you get an error on that begin date, um, one thing you're not going to know if you haven't captured those dates uh, in your HR or payroll uh, data, then you need to know what we're expecting. We're not going to, we don't want you to play a guessing game with what we're expecting. So we're, we're giving you the access on the web access to pull that report. Um, and it's in a CSV uh, file, so it can be used like an Excel file and, and uh, you can work with your payroll vendor to, to look at those dates. But we want you to look at the dates on that report. And if you disagree with the dates or don't understand how we came up with the date, uh, give us a call or send us an email. We can work through that. Uh, one thing, one last thing on this, and then we'll move off of this new report. But when you see the dates uh, in almost every case, we will be uh, we will display July 1st of whatever fiscal year you first reported this person. Um, we don't have exact dates because on the annual report, we've never asked for the exact date. So if you reported the first time in the 15, 16 year that this person, uh, you, you first reported them to TRS, then we're gonna use July 1st of that 2015 year even if their actual first day at work was August 16th or September 1st. Uh, that's not a concern. As long as we're in the same fiscal year, you should be okay and not have a problem with that. Uh, some, some things on the employer, uh, as far as the resources for you to get started. Um, I mean, we, we have this three and a half hours that we've gone through 
a lot of good questions, but obviously once we turn this off and you, you go to your uh, day job off of this, we, we understand that when you come back to it, when we go live, a lot of this is not going to be uh, retained. So all the videos you've seen are out on the resources page of the website. Um, all of the written procedures that are out there for all the screens you saw in the videos. So the detailed procedures on each screen is out there. Uh, there's a validation error document. So all the errors that you could possibly receive, there's a, there's a document out there that's interactive. It's a PDF, but it's interactive. So you can navigate through all the different errors and see the resolutions. Um, and nothing in that document though, is not also in the system. So if you get the error in the employer portal, all the resolutions and everything that's in this document is right on your screen. And then the, the file layouts that uh, uh, show all the TRS requirements for the file uh, is out there on that same page. Uh, we are also putting a uh, reference guide uh, what we call a quick reference guide, uh, and it has some, it will have some uh, checklist type things of things that you need to do as soon as uh, we go live and you're in for the first time. Uh, we've had requests for, uh, you know, give me a checklist just to make sure I don't miss anything. And, and this quick reference guide that we're going to put out there uh, is going to have all that for you. The other thing we've done is set up a Gemini call center. Uh, the phone number is the exact same phone number you've used for employer services, but uh, we've added a fourth option to the menu when you call in. So as you listen through uh, the menu options, option four will give you the option to talk to somebody uh, in this call center who is specifically there to help you navigate Gemini, uh, answer some uh, basic questions, sometimes not so basic questions about uh, how, to, how to complete screens, what are the screens for, and that sort of thing. Uh, there are going to be some questions, some questions that we've gotten today that the Gemini Call Center will not be able to answer uh, that are more specific to how do we report uh, scenario one, two, three, or ABC. Uh, but if the call center cannot answer the question, they will um, warm transfer you to one of the auditors who can walk you through the correct answers. Uh, but the goal is that this Gemini call center will answer as many questions as it can, as they can. And if they don't have the answer um, and nobody else is available, they will be calling you back with the uh, with a response uh, just as quickly as they can. So that's an added feature I hope is helpful to everybody. Um, and the last thing that uh, I'm planning on doing is setting up some regular open forum type calls, uh, whether it's through Zoom or through Microsoft Teams, but uh, some sort of invite will be sent um, when those calls are set up. And it's basically just there to uh, allow you uh, uh, vehicle to give your feedback, your concerns, any issues you've come up with um, in an open forum. Uh, we just want the communication to be open. We want to know uh, your pain points, what you like about the system, what you don't like about the system, and how can we correct, how can we make a better user experience down the road. We don't want to just push this out to you and not have that open communication. So watch for that uh, in the near future also. And I talked, and we have about 10 minutes left on the, on the timer, so uh, we can get to a few more questions and then I'll just make a closing comment and we'll call it a day. Okay, I wanted to go over a few more things with the um, employment begin date report because of some of the questions we've gotten. Okay. It includes terminated people on the report because the report is as of your last annual report that you reported to us. So as you do your annual reports this year and they're set to complete, and then you look at your report that would be included with any new people that were included on your annual report this year. 
or those retirees from last year will have dropped off. Yeah, and just want to add to that and or, or firm it up, but yeah, the data we have right now is from the 2019-20 annual report. So it, it's it's over a year old. Uh, in some cases, it's it's almost two years old. So, but that is one of the reasons too, we're moving to Gemini. We don't want data to be that stale um, every year until the next annual report. So uh, that's something that we're, we will obviously be improving on by going to Gemini. But yeah, Lisa's right. The, the data may look uh, out of date because of terminated people and new people aren't on it. And that's exactly why it is out of date, but that's all we have. And it is just for your district. We don't want you to try and find out when they started with TRS at another district. It's with right. your, your district only. And for people who have consolidated, it's with the, you would start with the new district because it's a new TRS code with us. Right. Yeah, we are creating employment uh, different employments for um, each time this member has worked at a different employer. So, and it could be they're working for two employers at once. We're gonna have those two employments open in Gemini on the member side. And we wanna keep track of, of uh, eventually their service and earnings in each of those employment buckets. So as they leave your employer, we're gonna end that employment. But if they come back to you, we're gonna start up a new one because that's a new employment. Even though it's the same employer, there was a break. So it's two separate employment employers, two separate employments with that same employer. Okay. I had a couple more questions. Um, you, you mentioned that when we have employees work during June, June and paid in July, we'll have to enter an adjustment report. Is that to the annual report or newly weekly payroll report and will we receive instructions on how to do this type of specific adjustment. So if this July and August you pay somebody after you've submitted your annual report to us and they maybe turn in a timesheet or do summer school and you need to report something and it's for the 2021 school year, you will need to call us so that we can make a correction to that annual report. Once you have more than one year under Gemini, you will be able to do that as an adjustment to the prior pay period or to the pay period in which the work was done. Yeah, and uh, what I was referring to when I uh, was talking about that was yeah, how it will be done in Gemini going forward. But those, uh, you know, if you go to the, the resources web or resources page out there. Um, all of the written procedures are out there and there is one I believe specifically on adjustments or it may be included with something else, but those procedures are out there. Do you want any more questions? Oh yes, we have time for another couple questions. Sure. Um, I had a couple questions about summer school and whether how it would be reported because it's paid at $25 per hour in another district where it's paid as a stipend. If regardless of how it's paid, if it is for summer school instruction, summer school teaching that requires licensure, it would be reported as payment reason of SS and you would count each day that the teacher works summer school and report that as a day paid. And like we said, it's reportable in the year in which the work is done. So any June summer school is reported in one fiscal year, July and August fiscal summer school is reported in the next, next fiscal year. One more, Lisa. Okay. I am looking here for one more, sorry, give me a sec. What is reported on an employee leave balance when employees balances in days? I'm assuming you're referring, that question's referring to sick leave days and sick leave days are reported in days. 
the only thing that is not reported in days are retirees hours. Retirees are only people reported with hours worked. Everybody else is reported, whether it's days paid, doc days, sick and personal leave days are reported in days. Okay. Yeah, I know there's a lot more, a lot more questions out there that uh, we did not get to, but again, we are gonna, we're capturing the whole chat. So we will have those. Um, I know Lisa has uh, already sent some on to uh, the staff to return a call and see if they can uh, clarify some things uh, if you asked a specific question. Um, but with that, I wanna thank everybody for being part of this uh, session. Um, again, we'll have another one Monday, another one next Wednesday, and uh, it'll be the same presentation, but feel free to, uh, if you want some clarification or just want to see it again, um, you're welcome to join those also. Um, I also want to make sure that you all know that uh, we understand the stress of a, um, a transition like this. So there's been a little bit of stress on our end too, as you can imagine, but uh, we know that reporting to TRS is probably not your only job out there. So we are aware of that, empathetic to that, and we wanna work through this with you. Um, nothing is ever seamless. I always hate it when I hear, oh, we're gonna, we're gonna push this or, or do this and it'll be seamless. Uh, I never buy that. So I'm not gonna try to paint this as a, a seamless process. There will be some pain points, there will be some uh, angst and uh, some hiccups along the way, I'm sure. But uh, uh, just know that that the staff here in Employer Services are, are a great bunch of people and they are willing to help as much as possible. And the call center is there to take your calls, uh, good, bad or ugly, and we'll work with you as much as possible whether it's just payroll schedules or whether it's the regular informational screens or, or the working through the errors. Um, and also we have um, a re relationships with just about every vendor that uh, you could think of out there um, and are, have been in communications with all of them and still are in meetings with them uh, as needed so that they can tweak and, and refine their their application. So uh, again, thank you for all for coming. I'll let you get back to your day job, have some lunch, and uh, if you need anything, let us know. <laughs>